Hey, I'm Randy, and you're watching The Cheap Watchman. Here at The Cheap Watchman, we talk about high-value watches, except for today. Occasionally, we talk about some luxury watches. And today, we are talking about the Tudor Black Bay Ceramic, the stealthy version. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's talk about this cool Tudor watch. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. I'm trying to get this channel off the ground and I would love to get to 10,000 subscribers soon. So thank you so much for watching and please subscribe. I have a buddy who loves Tudor watches. Actually, he has a bit of a Tudor problem. He has three Tudor watches. He has been kind enough to not only lend me the Black Bay Ceramic, but also the very cool and hot GMT right here the opening dial. So I'm kind of tutored out at the moment. I hope I don't break them I also have a tutor. It is one of the heritage collection. I really like that watch a little bit big a little bit slabby But every time I wear it, I love it and I keep like glancing down especially when I'm out in the Sun or driving Love that watch. Let's talk about some specifications for this black Bay ceramic Tudor Ceramic comes with a five-year warranty. I'm assuming if you buy it from an authorized dealer. As a 41 millimeter matte black ceramic case with micro blasted finish, monoblock metal case. I don't know what that means. Open case back in black PVD treated 316L stainless steel with sapphire crystal. And it looks pretty good. It's all blacked out in there. I think this is the first exhibit or one of the first exhibition case backs for Tudor, they generally don't do it. I'm gonna try to show you pretty, pretty B-roll with this, but the case looks like, I mean, it looks like black stainless steel, brushed stainless steel, but it's actually ceramic, which is pretty cool. And this isn't nearly as slabby slabby as the Heritage watch that I have. On the top of the lugs, there is actually some high polishing on the ceramic, which is cool. In some cameras and some pictures, it shows up as silver, but it's actually black. It's just highly polished. And the bezel kind of has this cool radial pattern, kind of looks like brushing. Very cool, very subtle. Comes with a Caliber MT 5602-1U self-winding mechanical movement bi-directional rotor system. 70 hour power reserve, which is nuts. Screw down crown, signed of course. Waterproof down to 200 meters. The bezel is black PVD treated 316. 60 minute graduated disc in black ceramic with sunray satin finish, which is really cool close up. Domed sapphire crystal and a really cool hybrid slash rubber strap. And you get a complimentary fabric strap and then a cool clasp. You know what's funny is everybody talks about like micro adjust on stainless steel bracelets or metal bracelets about how awesome like really good micro adjust is but like straps are the og micro adjust too tight move it out too loose move it in accuracy so i have not been wearing this i've had it in the watch box for a few days and each night i wind it up and i also double check against the world time to see how close it was because i think i said it's I don't know, four or five days ago. So right now, world time is 10.09 and 10 seconds, and this is 23 seconds. So, over the time span of about five days, it's gained about 13 seconds, which isn't too bad. And this is Metas certified. I think some of the new Tudor watches are Metas certified, which is on par with Umiga. About $5,100, so should be pretty accurate, right? Let's take a look at the dial. The dial is kind of one of those things that you really need to see in person to appreciate. For me, it's not really a sunburst. It's just almost like a deep black ink that kind of raises up a little bit. And I think that has to do with the dome sapphire and how you're looking at it from an angle, or at least how, how I'm looking at it from an angle. So around the dial, there is a gray paint. And it's the same paint or print that the Tudor logo is in and that the writing is in on the bottom. This is Black Bay Master Chronometer down there at the bottom. 
I know some people complain about a busy dial with a lot of text on the bottom, but I actually wish that they had another stack. I love when there's symmetry above and below the pinion. The hands are the typical snowflake hands from just about every Tudor watch out there. Applied indices, triangle at 12, baton at 6, baton at 9, baton at 3. No date on this, circles at the 5s. The color of the loom is kind of like an off-white, creamy, yellowish color. And I hate that. That's the one thing I don't like about this watch. It's kind of the loom color. I wish it was just white, white. Like if I'm looking at my Omega Seamaster, that is white loom. And I just feel like the, the yellow tones on this, I don't know. I just feel like it should be more contrast, like black and white. You know, not black and kind of yellowish white, but it's still a really cool watch. I don't know. Obviously, Tudor knows what it's doing, and this watch is... I wouldn't say this watch is like out there as far as design, but I think Tudor's fairly conservative. So, and I know they've done black watches in the past before, but the stealthy kind of black on black is really awesome. But then the dial with the black is more conservative. So it's kind of, I don't know, paradoxically edgy. It's edgy, but then it's also conservative on the dial. The bezel is really cool. Um, there's radial brushing going from interior to out. I don't know how to say it. And then there's one minute markers between the noon and the 15. So you can use this to time things. I don't know how legible this will be underwater, but I don't think you're buying this watch for legibility. The case seems a lot smaller than my Heritage Black Bay. And I think it's the same depth or the same height, but the case is slimmed down a little bit so it sticks out above and below the case so when i'm wearing this this seems a lot skinnier than the heritage black bay that i own and it looks a lot skinnier than the gmt too right here kind of cool and kind of different so it's a combination leather and rubber strap Make some funny noises. If you look at the back of the strap, you can see basically like snowflake hands kind of stacked up on top of each other. And I think that's a cool detail because most people aren't going to notice it. The strap has off color stitching, which luckily is the same color as the loom. So at least they're being consistent. Double keepers right here. And on the back you have stitching that's again the same color. And then a really nice deployment clasp. Uh, so, what are my final thoughts? I know some um, others have commented about this ceramic being somewhat affordable compared to other watches out there from like Omega. And yeah, it is. There's an Omega Seamaster, the 300 Diver, which I have the stainless steel version. Really cool looking. I think less usable than this one though, and it's I think comes in around $8,500. So relatively speaking, the Tudor is cheap in comparison. When I looked at pictures of this, I really, really wanted it, and I got excited when I got to wear it for as long as I have. But I gotta say, it doesn't do as much for me as I thought it would. I mean, this is a cool watch. Like if you walk in wearing one of these, no one's really gonna know what it is i guess in a way you're showing off because it's so different from like a blingy watch but this is the type of watch where i don't think someone's necessarily trying to show off because even though it's a black on black watch with white indices it's kind of something for the wearer and then it'd be really cool if you walked in at a corporate event wearing something like this this is definitely not going to be for the masses I would be interested to know how many of these they sold in comparison with like the regular black bays. I mean, I'm sure it is way lower than some of the popular black bays. Or like this GMT, something like that. But I think it's cool that they're doing something a little bit edgier, a little bit different, a little bit more fun. And it is different enough. I mean, it's not as slabby. It's got a more, I don't know, accurate movement in it. It's pretty cool. I wonder if Rolex is going to come out with something like this, a ceramic Rolex. Anyway, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. You can also check out my other channel. It's called The Cheap Audio Man. If you're into hi-fi home theater or headphones, that's where you want to go. So don't worry about buying something you can't afford, even though I'm talking about a $5,000 watch. 
Buy something you can and enjoy every minute of it. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Watchman.